Next up, we have an English club member. Please give it up for Shirin. Hey, everyone. Oh, too loud. Sorry. OK. Um, this one goes off. To, this poem goes to the boy who flew too close to the sun and to the Icarus that lives in each of our hearts. Here goes. How long is forever? When Icarus flew too close to the sun, everyone claimed him a fool, made him a metaphor for ambition driven by idiosity, a laughing stock for mortals who had no clue. Don't you think he knew? Knew exactly what he was doing? He read all the signs, noticed the wax melting around him his very own salvation becoming his demise. Someone once said, every story has a beginning, middle, and an end. Not necessarily in that order. Maybe we only ever got to hear Icarus' story from the middle. We never heard his beginning, never knew about his loneliness, never knew how he was always stuck in the dark. And there it was the only source of light he ever saw, seemingly in his grasp. And how can he not reach for it? We never heard from the sun whispering promises of forever, of protection and love, promising him to be seen. I like to think he saw it coming, knew exactly how it all would end. When his dad shouted towards him and when his dad shouted towards him in warning, I like to think he smirked defiantly, fully aware of what he's getting himself into. He didn't mind if he burned. He didn't mind if he burned. Um, oh no. <laughs> he didn't mind if he burned. Uh, as long as he got to be embraced by the worm. The sun illuminated him for once, and he wanted to bask in its recognition. He didn't mind falling. He foresaw the pain, the crashing, the crushing of his lungs. But he allowed himself to enjoy the plunge, the wind rushing against him, the champion's view from above. That cherry blossom summer I lost track of my metaphors. I'm not sure if I was Icarus or the sun or the air that got knocked out of his lungs. I don't know if it matters anymore, for metaphors cannot turn back time, cannot change outcomes. It's just a way to talk about it without really talking about it. It's just a way of hiding. It's cowardice dressed up in beautiful imagery. That's why Icarus never bothered comforting himself with lies, settling for second best, for metaphors and similes, he flew straight towards his kryptonite. He preferred burning over never knowing. He preferred burning and crashing in a fever of chaos rather than dying a slow, mediocre death. He didn't waste time being frozen over by disappointment. Every story has a beginning, middle, and an end, not necessarily in that order, but we don't get that luxury in life. Nothing is clearly labeled. An end could easily be a beginning. A beginning, only the middle. Depends on the perspective. Depends on what story you're trying to tell. Icarus never drowns in my story. He falls and he crashes. He picks up his pieces and he tries again, reaches that damn star and melts to it, takes control, distinguishes its flames as he dies along with it and decides he has conquered his weakness. How long is forever? Sometimes, it's just a second. Thank you.